Here at home, the Prime Minister announced new measures today aimed at helping renters. Justin Trudeau was in Vancouver, where tenants pay some of the highest rents in the country. Trudeau said the government's plan will give renters more credit for paying their rent on time every month and improve their chances of buying a home. The reality is young people are spending a huge amount of their income on rent. And if you look at someone who pays a $2,000 mortgage, they're getting recognition and credit for that from the bank as part of their credit score. But if you're paying $2,000 a month on rent, that gives you no kudos. It gives you no credit. It gives you no, uh, no recognition that you are working hard to meet your obligations and pay a sizable sum every month. That's why this change of making sure that the money you pay in rent every month is recognized as part of your reliability, as part of your credit score, will help you eventually unlock home ownership, access a mortgage, access borrowing, and be able to build that future that we know you deserve. Part of today's announcement included a promise to amend the Canadian Mortgage Charter. It would call on landlords, banks and credit bureaus to make sure, you heard those words from the Prime Minister, that rental history is taken into account in your credit score. So to discuss what this means and how it could help level the playing field for renters, I want to welcome Scott Terrio. He is the manager of consumer insolvency at Hoy's Michaelos. And Scott, appreciate you coming in to talk to us. Thank you. Thanks very much, Andrew. So what do you make of this mm -hmm. amendment? Again, I'll, I'll just use some of the words that the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister mm -hmm. used, you know, to sort of, you know, make sure, call on, working together with, <laughs> with banks so that renters, uh, rental record, if you will, paying their rents uh, on time is taken into account when it comes to their credit score and maybe one day being able to buy a home or, or get a mortgage to buy a home. Yeah, a lot of... Um a lot of somewhat vague and squishy words there. I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, I think a lot of this is going to come down to teeth and enforcement. Uh, I noticed you said that they will call on landlords. Okay, well, what does that mean? So hopefully what this does is it brings a, a bit of um, a more level playing field because frankly, for the last decade or so, there's been a, become a great divide in this country between sort of homeowners and renters. And a lot of renters have felt left behind and kind of falling through the cracks because, yeah, I mean, I pay 2000 a month for three, four, five, six years. I get no credit for doing so. Now, uh, hopefully this actually makes this a thing instead of just hoping that someone will do it. Because unfortunately in this country, when it comes to a lot of financial issues, you know, we talk a good game, but we don't necessarily implement well. So then what, it, so, our, you know, we're, we're just basing this on the language that we heard mm -hmm. and the words that were used, but from the language you heard, do you feel as though there, there, is, there is not the teeth that is needed, or do you, well, do you or, or what do you think? Yeah, I, but that's my suspicion, but when, when you say you're amending the mortgage charter, the Canadian mortgage charter, that sounds like it's, a, like it's solid. And so I think what people need to realize is that this is very important to people who rent and you know everyone talks about okay you know we'd like everybody to be homeowners at some point and, and, and you know we had a housing boom in this country for a decade and it really changed the entire financial landscape of the country without you know without sounding too uh, extreme and so I mentioned the divide between renters and homeowners renters really want to get this on board like up until now this has been voluntary okay so you can have your rent reported but it's done through an agency called the Landlord Credit Bureau, which operates in the four western provinces and Ontario. And what happens is you make a voluntary arrangement with your landlord and the landlord reports your rent, yes, check, 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 you pay every month, uh, to the Landlord Credit Bureau, this agency, and then the agency turns around and reports it uh, in turn to the official credit reporting agencies, Equifax, TransUnion. So, so it, it's done indirectly and voluntarily. So hopefully this turns this into a, a, a solid and legitimate uh, reporting, reporting issue. So that's done voluntarily. Uh, yeah. Is there uptake or do, do a lot of people put that information it, into that there's, database? There's not a ton of uptake, to be yeah. honest. Um, I mean, it's certainly there's more uptake now because we've become you know, a credit-obsessed society. Everybody wants to be homeowners. Uh, and that sort of thing. So I think if you looked at the n at the numbers now versus five or ten years ago, it would be a great uptake, but still not huge. And so I think this needs to be more embedded, I guess, in the uh, in the financial landscape in Canada. And you know, it has to have teeth. And I think then you would, as the Prime Minister said, 
you know, enable people who want to become homeowners. I mean, this is a huge thing. You know, it's first of all, it's a massive amount of your income per month. You don't you don't pay anything bigger than your rent if you're a renter. Um, so it's important, and it's important to be recognized. Now, there's a flip side. Obviously, if you miss payments, mm -hmm. you're going to get dinged for it too. So that's the other side of it. But I think people would readily agree to that. And so we were just talking about, you know, what goes into a credit score, because if, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're a renter, if you're a younger person, mm -hmm. how is that even uh, assessed? So credit scores are, this, you know, this magical three-digit number, and it's created by five inputs or elements, and each of them has a weight by percentage. And payment history, which is what we're talking about here, is actually the highest weight. It's about 35%, depending which, which bureau you're talking about or which bank you're talking about. Um, and so it's pretty major. I mean, if you if 35% of your three-digit magical score is based on payments you make, and now all of a sudden you've got 12, 24, 36 months behind you in making rent payments, it's going to make a big difference to your credit score and to your ability to to borrow down the road. So okay, so we don't know whether there's going to be enforcement of this. We just base it on what what we've heard today. Do you think there's social pressure on? Uh, banks and lenders to kind of say hey wait a second maybe the government has a point here there are a lot of people feeling mm -hmm. that pressure they do want their rent there some acknowledgement mm -hmm. of, 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 of their rent yeah uh, do you think that could be enough of an, an, an incentive well there's certainly been social pressure on this issue yeah I mean a lot of a lot of renters groups uh, have been pushing for this kind of thing for a long time but also I think from a financial standpoint it's in the interest of the banks because if you're more credit worthy, I can lend to you, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know, we just saw recently that they're going to change the, you know, make make pretty big changes to the, um, you know, how much you can borrow for a mortgage, basically the ratio. And so, okay, well that means people better have you know that much better credit scores because it's going to be harder to get a mortgage in some senses. And so, but I think the banks should be on board with this because you know what, it's a it's a trustworthy. Um, history of payments, it's rent, you know, it's it's obviously uh, cleared by the credit bureaus and it's a substantial thing upon which to lend. So, you know, and that's how banks make money. So I think for, for the bank standpoint, it's also a financially uh, a very sound thing. So you like it from both sides, from both the, the sure. banks and yeah, from I think so. and, and Yeah, and, and like you said earlier, yeah. unless there's more to it, <laughs> we're only going on, you know, yeah. a few sentences of yeah. spoken two hours ago or whatever, but like, you know, it's a step in the right direction if that's the intention. And just uh, quickly, longer term, how do you think this could address the housing and affordability crisis? Well, it doesn't help supply, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's, uh, you know, that's a, a separate interview, okay? Mm -hmm. But, but you know, it, it certainly helps, you know, the, the, the borrower side of things in the sense that, you know, more people can get in. Now, does that make things worse because now more people can borrow? Well, maybe it does in a way, but um, you have to have people able to fall back on, you know, their credit history in order to borrow, and then I think you have to address the supply issue separately. Like this is not going to fix the supply issue, but it's going to make things more fair between homeowners and renters. I think. You're right, Scott. We could uh, spend many more minutes uh, talking. <laughs> Call me again <laughs> about all that. We will. I appreciate that. Credit Counselor okay. Scott Terrio. Thanks, Andrew. Here in Toronto.